Hello everyone and welcome back to the Telltale Podcast. I'm your host Kayla Goldsmith and today I'm here with Simone. We've brought her back on the podcast today and the topic that we're kind of going to be focusing on is narcissism and women in the social media space. And the reason why I wanted to kind of bring this topic today was because I just feel like the word narcissism is very kind of loosely directed at people today, especially women in the social media space and it's something that I definitely wanted to interrogate and I felt like Simone was like the perfect person to do this with. I wanted to pick her brain on this topic and obviously as well with the last episode that we did with Simone I got a lot of positive feedback on that so yes again thank you for coming back on and joining me. So keen to hear your thoughts. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be back. (laughs) Awesome. So the first question for you is kind of narcissism and what it truly means to be a narcissist. I feel like people don't understand the true definition of what a narcissist is when they're saying it. It's like very loaded and a lot more deeper than like a term that you should just be using like that. So I'm keen to hear your thoughts on the topic. Okay, before we get in, just for background, you guys, I am a psychology graduate. (laughs) So I just want to say narcissism is a personality disorder and there is debate on like whether it's inherited or you get it from like early childhood. No one really knows, but the way it's thrown around on the internet is so different to the actual meaning of it on the internet when someone's like i'm a narcissist or they call another person that it usually means they're like full of themselves or they're really confident more so the latter when directed towards women but in psychology it means you have a personality disorder and there's nine criteria and the main one is that you don't have empathy like narcissists cannot feel love they can fake it and they do have like an inflated ego but just because you were one of those things out of the nine criteria and by the way you have to meet five out of nine it doesn't mean that you have NPD and it's just thrown around all the time it's kind of like how people say I'm OCD when you're not like OCD is an entirely debilitating condition and just because you freak out because your room's not tidy it doesn't mean you have that condition so I think the internet needs to be more educated on the meaning of these disorders and mental health conditions and just stop like loosely using this term because it's especially damaging to women 100 percent. and I mean you have you had the word directed to you because I feel like I feel like I swear I've seen it somewhere and like yeah I don't know did you respond to those kind of comments or do you kind of just like ignore them it's funny because we talked about this on our last podcast I think we probably Um, did (laughs) I did because I was listening to it and I think Mm -hmm. I said I went on live stream and I was like not in a very good mood yeah but this was during lockdown and I was always on live and I wanted to talk to my audience and then because I wasn't in a good mood someone said you look like a narcissist today oh yes I remember this yeah yeah it's really odd and it's like it's not kind of expected to be like this happy bubbly persona 24 7 um yeah very strange especially because people only see like snippets of you and your personality as well like you know what I mean especially online like they just see what they're given essentially and what you're willing to share with them. So it's kind of, I feel like it's a very much an invasion of your privacy and your kind of thing to be expecting you to like be on all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And not only that, but how can you define what someone with narcissism actually looks like? How do you know that they have like an unhappy face? It has many different forms, you know? So I think, that just further proves the point that people have no idea what they're talking about and how they just throw it around. 100%. And I mean, this kind of like, basically we've touched on it a bit, but a lot of smart, ambitious women, I think particularly within the social media space and labeled narcissists, like this is just kind of a common thing, I think across the board. And like, I feel like people use it when they see a woman that's like beautiful or attractive. And if she posts a post of herself, in like a nice outfit or looking really like glammed up or whatever she's instantly a narcissist and I, I I don't understand what the correlation is but do you have any thoughts on that kind of like why people choose to throw that term around when they see someone that's like maybe modeled in a way that they look incredible or they carry themselves really well yeah so I have a lot of thoughts on this hopefully I remember them all but I think first of all it's almost seen as shameful for a woman to be confident 
and like god forbid she's openly confident about it on the internet and it's also shameful if a woman loves herself because women all our lives we've been taught to not only be competing with one another but we're taught to hate ourselves so if you're confident yeah you're automatically seen as a narcissist people shame you and i think men do that because they want to keep you subordinate they don't want you to be confident because it's already really difficult for men to date and like when a woman knows her self-worth it's going to be even harder for them and secondly when women shame another woman for being confident i think it's actually them feeling bad about themselves like they wish they could be like you but they can't so they try to put you down next question for you is do you also feel that people confuse self-help with narcissism are the two like interlinked or they are they complete different phenomenon Uh, so i understand where you're going with this and how people can confuse it maybe because if you're like too deep into self-help then it can be seen as narcissistic right because it's all about like me 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 but i don't think it's like that at all because like i said earlier narcissism is not a good thing it's a bad thing Self-help is a good thing. It's imp- it's aimed at improving yourself. But I think when people confuse self-help and narcissism, it's usually when a woman is trying to improve herself. That is when that word comes out. I don't think it comes out when men are trying to improve themselves. For example, men have so many idols on the internet, especially this year. And all the men that follow them, I don't think they're calling them narcissists for making this content or for them wanting to level up. But when a woman does it, or when other female creators emerge in the same space, either she's copying them or she's a narcissist and she's trying to push the wrong message to her audience. Yeah, it's such a strange thing, like the way that like the patriarchal influence just like seeps through, even though like, obviously, I think women have gained a lot more power in recent years. And I think like, in our heads sometimes we feel like we've made so much progress but like these kind of like underlying forces just continue to like pervade the social media space and it's like through things like the comments calling women narcissists and just trying to keep them down like trying to keep that power in balance um which is just yeah yeah, it's messed up it's funny sorry to interrupt it's funny right because um there was a hater on my discord and i talked about it on my private account but they were like making up lies about me and they said they were collecting evidence on me that I am a rich Jewish woman from a billionaire family and they made me YouTube famous. And secondly, they called me a narcissist. And yeah, they called me a narcissist because of my self-help videos. And it's like, okay, what's the correlation here? <laughs> it's so odd to me. Like, I, I, I just don't understand it. I think self-help like is so good but I think as well it does have um it can become toxic and I think it's mainly to do with like some of the male creators that you did list like in terms of the way that they portray or present self-help in social media and it's like it's not just kind of like leveling up yourself anymore it's more so as well like it's having an impact on other people and I feel like that's when self-help kind of doesn't become self-help anymore do you get what I'm trying to get at there I do and I feel like but when you're when you help yourself you help the others around you unless you're okay unless you're watching maybe I shouldn't say his name starts with an s I don't like his content yeah yeah yeah. when Mm. guys watch that type of content you're not helping the people around you you're not becoming a better version of yourself that's my opinion 100% I agree with that yeah but I think as well like there's almost this like not tunnel vision but like especially when people are trapped on online and they're just getting like presented content that's like obviously tailored to to their views they're kind of trapped and they feel like that is the right content for them like they feel like that content is positive they have no ability to like remove themselves and really like have I guess their own thoughts on a topic which is so sad like I feel like people get so trapped in what they see and they just kind of assume whatever beliefs they're being thrown and then obviously with the nature of algorithms just presenting the same stuff over and over again it's like how do you break the cycle yeah and it that's how it shapes your worldview especially the TikTok algorithm you can have one person that um has an opinion that's totally outlandish and then other people agree with them and maybe you'll get like five videos on your for you page five videos of this type of opinion it's already enough to make someone think wow everyone thinks like this 
maybe you've received that five videos in like a very short span of time. So that mm-hmm. further feeds into the, oh my God, everyone thinks like this now. And then mm-hmm. I'm going to think like this. It just keeps feeding into each other. Yeah. Obviously as well, talking very broadly, I just thought of this. If an influencer, and I think this has happened very recently, we're not going to name names, but if an influencer is kind of creating or it seems seems to be creating some sort of toxic culture online, do you feel like removing them from platforms or kind of just like censoring their content is the way to go? Or do you feel like it doesn't really have that big of an impact? Do you feel like the damage has already been done? Yeah, so that's been happening a lot this year in particular to men because they're more controversial, I think. I don't think social media platforms should censor this content because freedom of speech first of all and I think people need to decide what type of content they want to view and not view and also it doesn't help because when you censor someone their fans get angry and then they just spread this content even more on the platform so they're never really completely removed and for example, Andrew Tate just went to another platform called Rumble and because all of these male I don't think they're influencers, but like male figures are in like one group. Now they all make videos demonizing social media and how everyone's going to be censored soon. And I notice it's creating like fear among everyone. And now they're going to other platforms. And that's what I think will happen in the future. More platforms are going to emerge where creators feel like they can just say what's on their mind. Like even me on Instagram, I get censored for like the most ridiculous things. And sometimes it won't even be like a person at Instagram or someone reporting. It would just be their faulty, whatever it's called, like, what's it called? Like the faulty code. I don't know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And it would just be like, okay, she said the word European man. Let's block that. And then I get a strike on my account. And because of that, I post everything on my proof now. I don't post anything on my main. Yeah, so I think social media networks, they're just getting more and more sensitive over time. And censoring people, it only causes more damage because you're never going to remove them. And when you have a loyal audience, you actually own that audience and they will have your back. You won't be gone. Yeah, 100%. And I feel like there's always been controversial figures like around even like before social media was super big like you have had like celebrities or just like political figures that have been you know absolute menaces but I think as well like I guess as users of social media we also have the power to give these these people power if you know what I mean and I think like in the sense when there are creators that are purporting like controversial ideas or things that are messed up essentially I think even by sharing them in a way of like like this is so messed up I think sometimes just in like encourages the the algorithm and encourages like the spread of these ideas still even if it's not having an impact in a real way it's still allowing it to spread and I think like I don't know like I'm trying to think is it even viable to really ignore these people because obviously I think it's important to have the conversations off the back of them because it it allows for really positive kind of change to be made but it's such a complicated kind of thing um but yeah I think like off the back obviously of of a lot of these controversial male creators there has been positive talk in terms of like reforming toxic masculinity and whatnot so it's a double-edged sword I guess no you worded it so well and I agree but yeah, I don't think we can completely ignore it. Mm. The internet never ignores anything. Yeah. Like some person will always bring it up and then the comments will like argue with each other. Yeah. And more will pop up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Cancel culture is a whole different thing as well. Entirely. So. So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think it even is and like it actually works anyways, if you know what I mean? Like I don't think it actually has an impact. Obviously it has... A positive impact in terms of like bringing up those conversations but I don't think anyone can truly be cancelled especially when they have like a really massive platform like the way that someone like Kanye West I guess does it's it's strange do you have any thoughts on cancel culture that like have popped in your brain yeah I was just trying to like get some examples just mm. then I think cancel culture it doesn't work for men but to an extent it works for women I mean Look at Amber Heard. Mm. She was cancelled and her career will never come back. But look at Chris Brown. 
didn't he beat up like multiple women mm. his career is still flourishing yeah and like every male youtuber that's been cancelled has come back even stronger mm. at I the top like... of my head i can't think of like oh no you go no i was just gonna say i feel like people are like they're more willing to accept that a woman is a villain rather than like a man like a man i think it's like internalized misogyny kind of thing yeah and i think also because of internalized misogyny sometimes women can subconsciously want to watch another woman drown like even if they don't want to think that on the surface because of that internalized misogyny they might feel that way this kind of links as well to pick me culture which i didn't write down before but like i feel like it was something as well that was very much spread around social media obviously it didn't just stem from social media but in general what are your thoughts on pick me culture and like the nature of of, of it yeah pick me culture is so broad um i don't even yeah. know where to start on it but yeah it all just stems back to gaining male validation mm. i don't respect it but sometimes girls cannot help but be a pick me they might mm. have like deeper issues daddy issues whatever and it's up to them to heal that part of themselves but it's much more difficult than that because even me sometimes no not me actually <laughs> being a pick -me, no, I was like, you're like wait no. yeah <laughs> no because like being the definition of a pick me right it's like you actually put other women yeah. down mm -hmm. so no that's not something i do yeah, 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 like, yeah no i don't do that yeah, yeah. no 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 we love <laughs> but, women yeah, if you, uh, yeah no women need to lift each other up mm -hmm. um so yeah i think it, okay let's, let's talk about the male gaze though mm -hmm. people who are pick me's they just conform to the male gaze all the time yeah and i feel sorry for them but it's also like i don't think every woman can escape it there's a quote by like margaret atwood and it's like you have a male voyeur looking mm. at everything you're doing and even when you're not conforming to the male gaze are you still conforming to the male gaze because you're not trying to conform to it yeah. anymore and you're mm -hmm. trying to be different so yeah the whole pick me male gaze it's such a broad topic and mm. it's funny because I wanted to talk about this on my new channel, but I started the video and I'm like, I can't articulate this yet mm. because it's just so deep and I need to yeah. literally write an essay out. Yeah, no, I was like struggling thoughts. to bring the question up because I was like, is this a good question? Because it's so broad, as you said, like it's just... There's a lot of nuance to it. I think it would need to be obviously divulged further, but yes, follow Simone's other account if you want to see mm. that, if it does come yeah. to light. But yeah, I 100% agree. I think it's very much like pe women tailoring themselves to the male gaze. Um, and it's always like, it's a subconscious thing. It's not always like very much, like you can be conscious of, of not trying to be a pick me. And then like, obviously, as you said, that kind of the act of trying to be stray away from the pick me culture in itself can be, um, kind of basically you also adhering to the male gaze so yeah very like you can't escape it mm, we're like trapped let me out <laughs> no let me out. <laughs> <laughs> um but yes okay in terms of yourself and the content that you create do you create with a female audience in mind um or are you kind of just creating content like very broadly because obviously like you do have like self-help tailored videos and whatnot but are you subconsciously like hoping that it will reach a female audience or are you kind of just like everybody? <laughs> I have a 90% of female audience. I don't think that can be helped. So I can't go creating content directed at men. I do create for women and I don't want to create content for men because catering to men is so terrifying. It's funny because I posted um, a YouTube short a while ago and it was a crop from my video I made with Kathleen about like dating advice. Mm, yeah. And for some reason, my YouTube shorts go directly to men. The algorithm just puts them on like incel male feeds. Mm. And I open the comments and it's like paragraphs and paragraphs of hate. And what they're saying, it, it wasn't even like constructive criticism or good comments where they're saying anything valid. Mm. For example, we were talking about how women shouldn't put all their eggs in one basket yeah because men don't do that they go and they date multiple women before deciding to settle down mm -hmm. or make a 
his girlfriend, you know? So I said, women need to do the same thing, especially because women, when we get more attached easily Mm. and look, I think it's good advice. Women should follow it. Yeah. And males were like, this is terrible advice. It's already hard enough for us to date. Like, and you see how how they just want to keep women sporting Mm -hmm. it. They don't want women to know their worth. Like, I have other options. It makes it harder for them. Yeah, all the comments were like that. And, oh, my God, I was so terrified and I deleted the video (laughs) because in that moment I realised I do not want anything to do with men on the internet. Yeah. Like, don't – I'm not for you, okay? I'm for the girls. Mm -hmm, For the girls, yes. And I think as well, yeah, just naturally – women are very much like drawn to your content in regards to that in terms of like the disrespect you faced online um and as an influencer obviously we've spoke we've touched on this like would it have been directed towards you if you were a male creator and I don't think it would have been because a lot of the content that you're creating is like self-help based at the moment um and that's like very much similar to what a lot of these like male interesting figures are kind of bringing forward to the table obviously yours isn't as extreme and like messed up as their stuff but this similar in the nature in terms of self-help um and so yeah do you feel like you would have kind of faced the same level of, of um disrespect if you had been a male creator no i don't and i think more recently in the way i've like kind of faced disrespect is because on my new channel um yeah people be like you're copying this creator and it's like, no, I've had this content for years. And yeah, someone can use like the thumbnail title strategy to get views and you would be stupid not to. But when males, males do it, they copy each other. Everyone's silent. They love it. Oh my God, we welcome you to the community. But with women, no, let's put her down. And it's not men who are doing it. It's other women. Yeah, no, and it's very strange, like, in terms of, like, the comments that you get, obviously you've mentioned that a lot of, like, um, male social media users have, like, obviously kind of conveyed an issue with your content. Do you find that a lot of women also convey any issues with your content or, like, and in what kind of ways do you feel like that's mainly directed towards you? Well, to be honest, on my main channel, I don't get a lot of hate. If I do, it's usually from children or like old people who don't understand young people but yeah on my new channel the algorithm is reaching a lot of newer people and the way I get hate is like they don't know who I am so they think I'm copying other people or yeah the men like don't like what I'm saying they prefer Andrew Tate and it's like well don't watch me I'm not for you right and I think the beauty of having multiple people who are like kind of similar but sharing a slightly different message or like the way they convey the message like the tonality Mm -hmm. it it's good because it gives people a choice to choose what creator they want to watch um I was talking on my prove about how when Emma Chamberlain popped up Joanna Setia also came around and when I first watched her I thought Emma Chamberlain rip off but she garnered like such a massive dedicated loyal audience and it's because they probably related to her more than they did Emma same with Olivia Neal so yeah Mm. you can't really hate it's actually a good thing yeah no 100% I agree and like honestly like as a user like you should be excited for more content like or create like content that's created that's similar but a little bit different because like obviously when I go on I kind of want to see I know what kind of content I want to see and so like having more of a variety of of content creators is honestly like a benefit to you as a a viewer I I don't get why people feel so iffy about it and especially like again it does link back to that thing of putting female influencers down like it's almost like this thing of there can only be one like that's all they'll (laughs) tolerate like women that care they're Mm. so attached to this one idol or a few idols they cannot have any more and Mm -hmm. then God forbid one of their favorite creators starts to become popular elsewhere. They want to gatekeep them now. Mm -hmm. They don't want other people to know. While I think men, they actually collectively like want to ascend and grow together so they can dominate women even more. Mm -hmm. So that's why they spread the message of Andrew Tate further. That's so interesting. 
I've never thought about about it that way, but I, I get what you mean. Um, it is interesting, like people will cling on to one female influencer and like anytime someone pops up, I especially remember like during Emma Chamberlain's kind of like peak era, like Visco girl kind of type beat. Um, and I think like Hayley Pham started to kind of like not encroach on the space, but she kind of was taking on a little bit of like, I feel Emma Chamberlain's like influence. And it was very different, obviously, from the type of content she created before, but um, a lot of people like directed a lot of hate towards her. And I guess like you could argue like people shouldn't like change their like initial kind of like, I don't know, persona, but I don't know. It's like, again, like you can't expect an influencer to be the same throughout like the time that you watch them. I think it's always like evolving and changing. And like, if you obviously don't like their content anymore, you have the option to unsubscribe and leave. <laughs> like it's, it's yeah, just exactly. strange. Mm. I don't think it's bad that if one creator is blowing up using like a particular strategy, other people start to copy it. Like they should just differentiate themselves in a way. Everyone does it, brands do it. Like it's a whole marketing thing, right? You can't ridicule someone for doing that. Yeah, but like in the self-help space, a lot of girls, including me, we now do the Wizard Liz thumbnail strategy because it works. Like our messages might also be similar, but the delivery is different. And it's not a bad thing because it's getting the message out there to more people, right? And you would be stupid not to try it if you're trying to grow because mm -hmm. no. it obviously works yeah 100 percent. yeah and like obviously as well as you said before anyone that's followed you long enough understand that like a lot of your content was very similar to someone like whizzlers like from early on obviously it took different mm -hmm. forms but like it's been like a natural evolution it hasn't been like you just started to create this content all of a sudden like a lot of the kind of advice that you would give was very much I guess like in alignment with what you're doing at the moment so yeah i think a lot of like the hate that would have been directed towards you like that obviously shows that they haven't kind of been on the simone simmons wave long enough to understand no, what's literally. going on <laughs> and my tone of delivery mm -hmm. it's always been like harsh and direct yeah i never should have quoted it mm -hmm. and like the people who don't watch me they're like wow even the way she's so harsh is like the wizard liz and yeah like, babe, Scroll down to 2020 and mm -hmm. watch the video I made in 2020. The OG. <laughs> Literally. Put some respect on your name. Yeah. No, Seriously. I 100% get that. Um, yeah. But yeah, in terms of, I guess we've touched on quite a few of these here, but I'm interested in terms of the female influencer community. Um, I'm not sure how like embedded you are in terms of like the friendships that you have within the social media space. Um, because I, I think that you obviously like, you kind of remain in touch with like a lot of your like friends before social media, um, which is beautiful to see. But in terms of the female influencer community, do you feel like there's toxicity amongst them? I, I also don't know if you like attend a lot of like the influencer events or whatever, um, but like, yeah, from what you've maybe seen or, or experienced, um, do you find that there's a toxicity there and do you feel like the friendships that are online are always incredibly genuine or do you feel like there is some, some sort of like elevation purpose to them in terms of like being able to climb up the social media ranks? Yeah, so I will preface by saying I don't think I'm entirely qualified to answer this because I live in Perth. There's nothing going on here. And even when I was in Sydney, I was not heavily in the Australian influencer community just because my audience is mainly overseas but I do have online friendships with other YouTubers and the people I know are really nice I don't think there is toxicity but there's definitely like more respect if you have a lot of views or if you're popping off people will be more interested in you and definitely want that clout mm. So I wouldn't say I have like deep friendships with these people mm. because influencers, like, especially if you live in LA or New York, that's where influencing is more collaborative because there's a lot of people living there. They collab with each other. And well, I'm not really involved with that. I actually sometimes think like maybe I should move there, mm. grow my career even more. But yeah, I don't have like deep friendships with other influencers. I think it can be surface level and yeah they do care about the number of followers you have I was vibing with this one girl I had more 
followers on YouTube. She had more followers on Instagram. She didn't follow me back on Instagram despite us vibing. And she's like, oh my God, like you need to come to my city and we'll hang out. Um, but you won't follow me back. <laughs> like what? <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. Mm. And it's not like she follows 30 people. She follows a lot of people. Yeah, but from what I've gauged, you seem to be someone that cultivates your kind of friendship space in your circle. Um, so like do you ever, as you said, you were thinking of like potentially moving to LA or something in terms of if you did want to kind of further your career, but would you, do you really feel like you would actually thrive in a space like that where like you were surrounded by a lot of influences um, or like in that kind of world or do you feel like it wouldn't be for you, like based on your personality or like what you could kind of, I don't know, foresee for yourself? I think you know, I've actually thought about this a lot. I think I would thrive just because it is a collaborative environment and people are competitive. So it will push you to work harder and your career will naturally grow. But I don't think I will enjoy it. I don't think I'll be happy. I'll be happy in the sense that I feel like my career is doing really well and I'm growing. But it, yeah, it's not an environment I respect I can't respect the cloud chasing nature of LA and how fake it is but if you have to do it to grow your career then like maybe you should do it for a few years and then dip that's what I would do but yeah really I just want to be like on a farm in Montana as you should and yes then, yeah <laughs> do you feel like you'll retire at any point like in terms of like like soon or do you feel like that's still a little bit You've still got a little bit no. left in you. No, I mean, I thought I was going to give up YouTube earlier this year against my will because of the whole algorithm mm. thing that happened, which is actually a glitch. Yeah. Is in it fact, back? Is, is it normal why... now? No, no, it never returned. And do you know the whole reason I started my new channel? It was mm. actually to test the algorithm. And yeah, it's doing fine. Like it's doing really good. I get the God. same amount of views, like pretty much mm. on a channel with 10K versus 550K. Yeah. It's like, what? So, no, I I don't take anything entirely in a negative way. I like to make, what what's it saying? Lemons at, <laughs> like to turn lemons, lemons into, into lemonade. lemonade. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just kind of was like, I need to go in a new direction here. And yeah, what I want is to have a community of women only leveling up. Mm -hmm. And yes, <laughs> it's funny because last year when we talked, I think I even said I hate making self help and mm -hmm. manifestation content. Yeah. And then this year, it like flipped. You I was changed. like, I don't want to do clownery anymore. I killed the mm -hmm. clown. You killed the clown. <laughs> Taking the weight <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah like yeah. I have to kill the clown and mm -hmm. now I'm doing self-help and I love it but I sometimes wonder if that algorithm thing didn't happen to me or if my audience didn't push me in this direction mm. what would I actually be doing mm. like I don't know yeah which is interesting and I guess like yeah as well like I wouldn't have expected you to kind of continue like creating clownery content either but I think obviously there are some users or like followers that like they just want their their influence favorite influences to be consistent, like all the same across the board. But I think mm. it's 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 always interesting to see like influences evolve as you're evolving. Do you know what I mean? Like growing with you. Um, so mm -hmm. it's like interesting to yeah. see this new direction, even though it's not like such a drastic leap from the content that you were creating before as well. Um, but yeah, very yeah, interesting. But, uh, before I forget. Mm -hmm. just to touch on it um the reason I also had to kill the clown is because you can't I feel like as a woman your only scene is one thing you can't be taken seriously if you're wearing a clown wig and then the next minute you're talking about your business venture and giving mm. advice on things you can only be one thing mm. and because I do a lot of things outside of YouTube and I don't like to talk about it but I was thinking these people watch my videos and they see me like being ridiculous on the internet they won't respect me especially mm. if they're men I have to be more serious online mm -hmm. which you know I am I am like naturally serious but I'm also naturally a clown I have multiple mm. sides of me yeah but the world cannot accept that mm. no 100% and I think it's like it's disappointing that like 
that's the nature of the world and that like you felt like you had to kind of alter it and I guess it's not even like a feeling of having to do it it's just like in terms of like your like your career online and everything like you had to do it it's just like I don't know it's disappointing but yeah again nature of the way that people view things like you can't be like the duality of woman like it can't exist you can't be more than one thing it's it's yeah it's messed up but the real mm-hmm. ones know that you are you are very multifaceted in nature and that's all that matters really <laughs> Wayne, yeah yes but okay. going back to oh okay <laughs> going back to your original question i don't think i will be leaving the internet anytime soon but when the algorithm thing happened to me it was more like a wake-up call that you cannot re- rely entirely on youtube and you have to own your audience so in terms of influencers and being an influencer in the space do you feel like viewers or audiences kind of dehumanized their influences because of their separation from this and i do remember us i think briefly talking about this in our other podcast episode if you want to listen to that go plugging my own podcast so go listen to that but yeah um in terms of like the disrespect they find it easier to dish it out particularly towards female influencers because you know they seem like this kind of like there's a distance between them and that creator they don't know that person in real life they feel like they don't have any attachment or any obligation to be a good human being I feel like that's how I would in my head like try and explain it even though I don't think it's valid at all but um what do you feel on that on that kind of um line of thought I feel like it's not necessarily down to gender but more about the parasocial relationship between the influencer and uh, the audience. So it also depends on how close you are to your audience. For example, on my priv, I do get disrespected by some people because there's not a lot of people on there. And I'm saying such personal things that, that people were like, this is my best friend, this is my friend, you know, I'm her close friend story. And then they might send me hate which is like in the form of a joke but it's entirely disrespectful and I'm like you can't be doing this like it's not funny you're not my friend and then I just block them so I think it really depends on like the degree to how close you are with your audience or how far away you are I don't know if it's different or I don't know if it's worse to be close to your audience to be honest or to be distant but in terms of gender this is only what I would think I don't know if this is true but I would imagine that men would be more fearful of sending hate to someone like for example Andrew Tate because they're actually afraid of his response like maybe the more you respect the creator or fear them almost to want to be them you're less likely to send hate and I think because women creators were less intense perhaps we can receive more of this disrespect as well and then when you put your foot down and you're like hey fuck you oh can I say that (laughs) hey like I'm not going to tolerate this disrespect then you're rude then you're a narcissist and I've always been really conscious of that like how my tone will be interpreted by other people so I don't know like what you can do about it at this stage yeah it's very strange and I think as well like um you as an influencer like you're quite active and engaged with your like your community or the ones that you let into your private because obviously there are just some interesting humans out there but um do you ever feel like you want to just like kind of like because I, I I do believe that sometimes familiarity does breed contempt and I think it's like obviously like it manifests in the way that some of these like um followers of yours like they feel like they're your friend and then they start acting up which is just so odd to me and I think it's just like something like human as well like I've I've seen it even manifest just like in real life a lot of people they get close to someone or they might like idolize someone from afar and then once they become friends with them they're like oh like they feel like they're the same and like obviously like you're human too and like everyone's human like you're the same on that level but like in terms of like I don't know it's like the disrespect just flies out the window um which is interesting to me. And yeah, back to the question, essentially I was asking, do you feel like you ever wanna shut yourself out? And I think you will say yes to this because I think I've seen you say that you wanna take your private down sometimes, but yeah, your thoughts on this. 
yeah it's so hard because this year I did want to be more private and that's also why I don't vlog as much now and I feel like I overly share my proof and it is dangerous because I don't know who's on there for example like that hater in my discord trying to collect evidence that I'm a billionaire apparently um and then the person that like sends stuff to my ex it's scary because you don't like know who's on that account but also I feel really connected to people on there and like the relationships I've built so I don't know I tell myself like hey Simone you need to actually take a break from your proof and stop uploading on here and perhaps I would do that if my main Instagram wasn't so censored like one more censored post my account's gone permanently so yeah I don't know I do want to be more private in like seriously my dream life somehow I'm on social media but I, it's not controlled by me like I have a presence but like, I'm not on my phone I'm not seeing the comments I'm on a farm in Montana and living yes yeah. living the the <laughs> cowboy lifestyle the <laughs> farmer lifestyle no I I get that and I I guess as well like you could say it in a in a sense that like potentially by being active on your private like I think myself personally I gain more respect for you just because of like I get to see more of your thoughts and a lot of topics that I respect but like yeah again it's like always double-edged because some people they just think that they're like your best friend and then they're like they can kind of just talk to you like very brashly or candidly and it's like mm. <laughs> oh wait sorry before I forget no you're so the fine. reason why I also have my priv is because I can share these thoughts with people and they get to know more of me. So if mm. I'm ever in like conflict online, these people know the truth and they can mm. actually defend me. So smart. It only, like, <laughs> dude, I'm very strategic. <laughs> like, no, yeah. You only need a couple of people online to be like, hey, this is not what she means at all. Like I have insight into this and then other people will start to follow that. Um, so that's why I like to give the people who are like, real fans inside into my life but at the same time sometimes I'm like it could go in the other direction where they know too much and they use it against me and sometimes yeah. I do feel like I share too much so that's something you'll figure it out I guess it's a process even, of yeah I yeah have to work out what you want to do yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah interesting um but yeah I think that's really smart to be fair like it's almost creating like a safety net or a protection for yourself because like, yeah, I think a lot of influencers get in dramas and like a lot of the like, I don't know, a lot of things get like left untidied. And if you had like a community that kind of knows you really well, they can vouch for you in that respect. And yeah, usually like when an influencer is trying to defend themselves, it's like not taken as genuinely as if like followers that have known them for a long time or, or like a lot of people are being able to back them up in respect so interesting i love that yeah <laughs> that's smart <laughs> but in terms of social media this is a very broad question again but what are your hopes for the future of social media space and i guess we can narrow it down in terms of like the way that women operate but also are perceived um through the social media lens um do you have any kind of i guess is there any sort of progress that you'd like to see made in the next few years because again like while there are a lot of toxic things that happen on social media it's a constantly ever-changing space and there can like there can be some really great progress um made so yes i think well like okay what i hope happens is that people don't just go with mass thinking and they actually develop a backbone and I think that will happen over time because so many more niche communities are being made and more people are becoming outspoken. But if major networks start to censor people because of this to control them, then I don't know how much progress will be made. But I will say I was thinking about your question today and I don't have an answer for it. Like perhaps I'm really jaded in this area because I don't have a lot of hope for the social media space. I think especially TikTok, it's not a good thing. I think the world would be better if this app was like gone and we went back to the old days on YouTube where we had out. Yeah, I don't have that much hope. I really, I'm also hope that individuals, yeah, develop a backbone. Don't go with 
mass thinking. And what I think will happen with social media too is that, yeah, people will find their community online. It's because there are so many new creators emerging every day that you don't have to go for like the top 10 creators and support them. You can go to like a little niche community. And, but yeah, I, you know what? I'm so jaded with social media. I don't think I have a lot of hope for it. I, I guess like everything is quite bleak at the moment. Yeah, I think it's it's hard to answer that question because yeah, it's very broad and I guess like you can't really predict what happens. Like it's so like unpredictable in terms of the way that people create new subcultures and new ideas and, and like the ideas aren't even new really. They're just kind of like, I don't know. It's all the same kind of ideas, just like, I don't know, almost like a, it's almost like a virus, like it spreads in different ways, but yeah, no, perfect answer. Thank you for that. And thank you for being on my podcast again. It was so nice to speak to you and to hear your thoughts on this topic. I will link all of Simone's details in the description of this episode. Go follow her new channel support. Um, and yes, thank you for letting me probe your brain today because it was very interesting. Thank you for having me. <laughs>